The Scandinavian defense, e4, d5, is very popular because it is quite easy to play. And some players who are a little bit lazy like to learn this as black because white doesn't have too many choices, but usually has to go into one of the main lines. Of course, you're going to take this pawn, and now we have two choices for black. The more natural move is to take the queen and capture the pawn immediately, but there are many players who like to bring the knight out to f6 and use the knight to capture it. Of course, you put a pawn in the center, attack the knight, bring out your knight, and castle. Now, we play a, a clever move, retreating the bishop to b3 so that it won't later be attacked if knight moves to b6. This also gets the bishop out of the way so that you can quickly get a pawn up at c4 and annoy this knight. For example, if black plays c5 or knight c6, you just play c4. And then the knight retreats, probably back to the king's side where it needs to protect the king. Then you just bring out your, your pieces. And in this position, you're ready to connect the rooks. You have a pawn in the center and a comfortable game. And you just play on. So this is a nice, simple and straightforward plan against knight f6. But suppose after you take the central pawn, black captures with the queen. Obviously you're going to bring your knight out and attack the queen, and it usually goes to a5. It can also retreat to other squares, but white can use the same sort of formation no matter where the queen goes. You bring the bishop out, attacking our favorite f7 square. Then you're going to bring your knight out and you're going to castle. There's a nice pin for black, but you castle anyway. Chase away the invader. And now I think that you can either put your pawn on d4 or just move a rook to e1 to put a little more pressure on e6. And now black always has to worry about potential sacrifices there. So this is a, a simple plan to counteract black's rather simple-minded opening, the Scandinavian defense. When black plays d6, Usually, the idea is that they want to play knight to f6 without allowing the white pawn to advance to e5. And, of course, we're going to take the center. Now, when they play the knight to f6, I'm going to suggest to you an interesting gambit. You can play bishop to c4, ignoring the fact that black can take your pawn on e4, because if they do, you have the surprising move, bishop takes f7 check. Then after the king takes, the queen comes to h5 check, black blocks, now you regain the knight, and now the position is about even, but I prefer white because the pawn structure is better, and even though we've given up the bishop pair, black still has some weaknesses to worry about. For example, we might try just advancing white's h-pawn up the board, ripping open the h-file, and continuing the attack against black's king. Meanwhile, white can castle on either side of the board, and the pieces come out quickly. So, this is a fun and simple variation to play against the Pierce defense. We can adopt the same strategy against the Alyekin defense. In this case, black is inviting us to advance the pawn and kick the knight around a bit, but that comes with some risk because our pawns can get a little loose. Instead, you might just try our standard plan of aiming at f7. And now, for example, if black plays e5, we're back in our double king pawn opening and we're back in familiar territory. So that's one less thing to learn. Of course, black can accept our invitation but if they do, we have the same trick sacrifice, bishop f7 check, followed by queen h5 check, and queen d5 check, and now we get the knight back. Now it's true that after black pushes the pawn in the center, and then maybe throws another pawn up, the position is about equal, but look at black's ugly 
rook in the corner. What we want to do is make sure that black doesn't get the pawn up to e5 and release his bishop, so I suggest the odd-looking f4 here just to keep that under control. And after that, we can just go about our business getting our knight to f3, castling, and bringing out our other pieces. We can get a pawn to d4 by putting a pawn at c3 to support it. So there are plenty of flexible moves here. And again, this is a nice, simple approach to countering the Alyekin defense. And it's one that will almost certainly catch your opponent by surprise. The only other thing that needs to be mentioned here is that after we play bishop c4, there's an odd gambit that black can throw at you by playing b5. And that is going to deflect the bishop from our targets at f7. And I recommend that you just simply retreat the bishop to b3, and then you can do the same thing. Uh, if black captures the pawn, you have the bishop f7 check trick. And if they play bishop to b7, you can just defend your pawn solidly and then go about your business developing your pieces, castling on the king side, eventually connecting your rooks, and go after them. All in all, this is a nice remedy for the Alyekin defense, which is an opening you're not going to see very much, and that's why it's important not to waste too much time preparing for it. Just learn this one simple line and use it, and you'll be okay. Another knight defense is the Nimzovich defense, which brings out the queen knight. Again, just play bishop c4, because that way, if black plays e5, you just play knight f3, and you're back in your familiar territory. If they try to provoke you with knight f6, just take the center and ignore the loss of the e-pawn, because once again we have the bishop f7 trick. King takes, queen check, and then we pick off the knight. And as we've seen before, this is a position where black has some weaknesses and the king is a little bit wobbly, where white is just ready to bring out the pieces in the usual way, get castled, and attack. This is a simple way of dealing with the Nimzovich defense, but it's a very effective one. Black can also adopt a King's Fianchetto defense, giving you the whole center, and since the bishop is on g7, it makes sense to support the center with a pawn at c3. Now, if black plays, for example, d5, we can advance our pawn and we get that pawn chain that we've been talking about. Instead, after d6, somewhat more modest move, we just bring out our pieces as usual. Here, I think that we might want to defend our e-pawn by moving the queen since the bishop is already out. And then after black castles, we just bring our knight out. Black can pin it, of course. But then we can just chase it away. And if he trades the bishop for the knight, we get the bishop pair. He does get the center. But look at this position. We have a wonderful pin on the knight. And we can castle and move our rook to d1. So this is a promising plan for white. I shouldn't even have to show you what to do against such garbage as the Borg defense, also known as the Macho Grob, but it is nothing to worry about. You take your center, and if they play the Gambit variation, which is quite likely if they prepare this opening, you just take the pawn, and now the trick is that if you take the pawn on c5, Black's going to win your rook in the corner. But you don't do that. You just bring out the knight. And then after they capture, you can offer up a, a small, not really a gambit, because you're not a pawn down, uh, but just uh, uh, returning the pawn to get a good position. For example, if they should take it, your knight comes out, and then you're going to be able to invade on h6. This is such a terrible defense for black that 
that we don't really need to do any preparation but I'd like to show you one other clever line if they play the Vorg defense in the non-macho way that is instead of offering up the G pawn they defend it by making another kingside weakness you just put your bishop on the light squares getting ready to attack and then of course you're going to get castled you can protect your center with a C pawn you get castled and now you can get the rest of your pieces out and you can attack on either side of the board for example if they play queen c7 you have the surprising attack b4 and because you have a queen to come to a4 with check if the knight moves the gambit cannot be accepted. If pawn takes pawn, pawn, take, pawn takes pawn, and now if black blunders and takes the pawn, you have queen a4 check, and then the knight has to come back, and you simply use your pawn to attack the knight. Then black thinks they might be able to escape by bring the queen out but it doesn't work because you just keep the pin going and even after the queens are traded there's absolutely nothing that black can do so this whole board defense nonsense shouldn't give you any cause for concern at all this concludes our survey of the king pawn opening which is the way I recommend that you start the game until you are an experienced chess player. Then you can explore some of the other options. In the meantime, if you just follow the strategies I've outlined for you, you are going to get interesting games with good possibilities to win and with very little risk. So go out and Spend your time studying advanced strategy and tactics and a lot of end games and just use what you need in the opening to get into the game with balanced prospects and no major weaknesses.